Okay, here we go. Now most of these things on here aren't really going to be beneficial to the server itself, but more on a desktop. But since a lot of you guys are, you know, PC users, obviously, um, maybe you just want to see this stuff just because it's cool to look at. You've never seen it before. This thing right here is a readout for the BIOS in case it needs to give out some errors. Over here we have our hard drive connectors. Um, this is a USB 3.0 connector. That's how the connections on the front connect to the board. The cable plugs in right there. This is the south bridge which handles all of this. Um, connections to the hard drives, connections to USB, um, actually, USB might have been moved to the north bridge, which we'll get there. Um, cannot, talking to the BIOS, uh, talking to the sound card, which is conveniently next to the THX sticker. Um, down here is USB 2.0 plugs. And yeah, right here, that blue one. And uh, all those black ones down there too are USB. It looks like this one has dual BIOS. That's where these two chips are. So in case we run into issues with, over with overclocking, we just need to flip this switch right here. And it'll take us back to a default setting so that I can come back and change this. You're actually able to change the settings on both BIOSes with, from either or. So if you screw up on this one, you can always flip this switch over and then go to this BIOS, which has basic settings. You'll be able to boot up, change these settings back to basic, switch back, boot back up on this guy, and then try some new settings. And that's very helpful. Um, instead of having to clear out all your old settings, all your, you know, all these other settings you may have locked in for your overclock, and you changed one setting and that made it unstable, well, you can just switch over, go back and change that, that setting that's unstable, and then flip back over and start back instead of having to start all over again and enter in more settings. These are the PCI Express slots. These are mostly for graphics cards. These are 16x slots, meaning it carries 16 times that more data than this slot, which is a PCI 1x. These are PCI E3.0s too, to point that out. Up here, normally right here, there used to be the north bridge, but in these versions, um, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, and I think Nehalem, they moved the north bridge onto the CPU to make things faster. So I guess it's kind of history now, but if you've noticed that before on an older computer, there used to be heatsink here. That's why it's not there anymore. Over here, this is where the power supply plugs in. These look like there's, these are those voltage readouts I was telling you about, and it, which is what is in that tiny bit of text down there. Over here we have our um, very helpful buttons. It's basically the power button, a reset button, and a, that one-click overclock button. You push it one time and boom, it does all the overclocking for you to 4 gigahertz. But we want to go beyond 4 gigahertz, so we got to do it ourselves. Here's where the processor goes. You gotta be really careful about this because right there are a bunch of tiny little pins and if you bend any one of those, you're in big trouble. I'm actually gonna leave this on for now because I don't want nothing to happen to that. These heat sinks here cool the power delivery system of the processor. So all of this componentry up here is to pull power from up here and over here, mostly over here, to deliver it through all these voltage regulators and give the processor power when it needs it at certain areas at certain times. Over here is where all our connections are, which I'll go over later. And these are the memory slots, which also get their power from over here and from this as well. These white pieces are for fans. Uh, there's one there, one there, and there's one down here. Yeah. 
So that's nice to have a couple so that basically all your case fans can be controlled by the motherboard. Um, and when the computer is not hot, um, then the fans will slow down. And when it becomes hot, fans speed up. You can set it like that or you can just set them to have it on all the time. We will have them on all the time because we want this puppy as cool as possible. And that's pretty it, much it for the motherboard layout. Spin it around. For our inputs. One cool feature about MSI, they say that this, these two USBs and this PS2 has like a higher ohm rating or like lower resistance or something like that to allow your keyboard and mouse to communicate better I don't know if, I highly doubt this is of any truthfulness, but they say that these two ports are the most responsive USB ports on here for your keyboard and your mouse. If that's, who knows. That right there is a reset button in case, you know, you put in some wrong settings and you can't get the computer to boot. You push that button right there, it'll clear out the whole board back to automatic mode and it should reset you back to zero. This is all audio outputs here, coax and uh, optical. We got our HDMI out for that onboard uh, video card that's located on the processor. We got two USB 2.0s it looks like. Two USB 3.0s, gigabit ethernet, RGB monitor out, DVI monitor out. So it looks like out of the box, we have one, two, three, three different monitor supports at once. So this video card, and support up to three monitors at one time. That's pretty cool for integrated um, graphics. And then we have the 5.1 out, which is uh, basically like your front, your front two speakers, your rear two speakers, um, your subwoofer in your center. This might even be a 7.1. This would be the two sides from to your left and to your, to your immediate left and immediate right. And there's your microphone in. And line in, I already said that. But that's pretty much it. That's the motherboard. Um, there's not much more to that. On to the next item.